Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. How do you avoid only getting data from the angry people? Today, we're going to talk about self-selection bias. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about self-selection bias. Earlier today, I was at the grocery store, and when I checked out, they were super nice. And then they asked me to take a survey. I told them I'd get right on doing that survey just as soon as I left the store. There are lots of different types of selection bias, but self-selection bias is really a term used most often in statistics when referring to data gathered by survey. One of the biggest problems with relying only on survey data is that not everyone wants to or has the same opportunity to take the survey. Self-selection bias occurs when an individual selects themselves to be included in a survey. When people pick entirely on their own whether or not they want to take a survey, you're likely to miss big segments of important data. One of the reasons you might miss out on data is that the survey isn't accessible to a representative population to choose to take the survey. Say, for instance, you wanted to get people's impressions on the in-store shopping experience of every San Antonian's favorite grocery store, HEB. If you only sent that survey out online, you aren't making it accessible to everybody. Only the people who shop both online and in store could really self-select into the survey. Online survey taking actually comes with a whole world of problems and may be deserving of its own video. But if you want a quick overview, I'll link a 2010 paper that talks about the dangers of how self-selection bias heavily impacts most data collected from online surveys down in the description below. Another big reason you might miss data is that participants are only likely to opt into a survey if it's something they feel strongly about. People rarely take the time to fill out a survey if they don't feel passionately about the thing the survey is measuring. That leads to bias in the data because it's not really representative of a broad population, just a smaller section with strong feelings on the survey topic. For instance, have you ever finished a business call and been asked to stay on the line and complete a survey after the call? Chances are you would only agree to take one of these customer satisfaction surveys if you'd had a really negative experience on that call. Statisticians had to come up with multiple methods to correct for self-selection bias just to get a more representative picture of actual customer satisfaction. Researchers go to pretty great lengths to avoid self-selection bias as much as possible. One big way to do it is to gather data in multiple ways. Take my example about HEB from earlier. Instead of just sending out online surveys about grocery buying experience, you could put surveys on receipts or mail printed surveys to neighborhoods around stores, or even put researchers there in the store to gather that data in person. But any time you are working with volunteer participants who aren't being compensated, it's pretty tough to eliminate self-selection bias entirely. All good research starts with good research design, so planning ahead can help minimize self-selection bias. Aside from self-selection bias, other types of selection biases are a huge problem in psychology. The vast majority of research in psychology is still conducted using college students as participants, which is hardly representative of the population as a whole. If you want to know more about selection bias, San Antonio grocery stores, or the statistical biases in your life, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! It's been like eight hours and I still haven't taken the grocery store survey. In San Antonio, you don't dare cross HEB.